William, you said the one thing you were willing to talk about was timeline. Well, can, or? I'm willing to talk about more than just that, but okay. I just, I'm not giving away. So here's the timeline-ish thing, Dave. I think you're going to talk about the next, like right now, as we sit here on Wednesday, day before Thanksgiving. I think today, even yesterday to a degree, yesterday and today, I know, I don't think, I know the goal was to really narrow it down now. So Ross and Justin Moore is playing a big part in this, and those are the two that are kind of spearheading this search. Um, I think right now as we speak, like today, yesterday, they're narrowing that thing down to a couple, maybe three. Uh, from what was a very wide net early, kind of down to, let's say, a large handful, small handful would be what, like three or four, yeah. five, more than that. And I think now they vetted everybody, and I think the decision will be, okay, we're going to go after this guy, and we're also going to continue to recruit or, or you know interview, carry through to this process uh, another candidate or two so i'm saying like as of today probably you're looking at two or three guys emerging um i think from what i've talked to of other coaches around the country assistants uh, you know at every level all the way up all the way down agents the whole works that's the expectation that and it's kind of almost what they've been told as well as it's going to narrow down to kind of a, a couple, three finalists by right about now. So let me just that goes both ways, too. That goes for the A&M side, and the other coaches are like, they've got other options, too. And they also have programs to lead, and they're like, hey, if this you know, carries on, we're going to focus on what we need to focus on. This might be too direct. Mm-hmm. And, and it's fine. But does that mean it doesn't matter what happens this weekend? Games wise, because there are names that we've it's heard. Like Kalen DeBoer, okay, who I think is still uh, a candidate. It does matter. Yeah, I mean, if well, I mean, he's in the Pac-12 championship anyway. But like coaches that have an opportunity for playoff berth, um, let's take him for example. That's a tough one, right? Because he's not leaving. And from everything I've heard about this guy, he is not one that will leave a job unfinished. And he's also one that will not allow himself to be distracted while attempting to f- complete this storybook, you know, achievement, you know, in Seattle. Because of that, if you, if he was your guy, you'd have a tough decision. I know it, it's easy to say you don't. Worry about, right, you know, you find, figure it out. And I, I get that. And I'm one that always says that. You figure it out. But, like, like if Dan Campbell, and he's not in it, he said as much. I told everyone he wasn't going to be in it. Just like I told everyone Landing wasn't going to be in it when we had people on this beat saying Landing was the guy. It was just a matter of, it was, it was never, like, even remotely. It wasn't even, it was so far from true, Nuno. It would be saying like me saying you were wearing an astronaut costume right now. It's just not even. It's in the car. <laughs> yeah, actually, you do have direct access to it with yeah. your uh, what is brother-in-law. Or, That's him. He yeah. was the astronaut. So, yeah. I with with a guy like DeBoer, he's. So I, I said that about Dan. Like, oh, if you could get Dan, you'd wait till after the Super Bowl and figure it out. You can't. But my point is, like, if, if, if you knew you were getting DeBoer and he would sign, like, a, an MOU and, like, have something, in, even then, though, it would be scary. But if you knew you were getting him or you felt as certain as certain could be, then, yeah, you'd wait, you'd figure it out. But the risk you run if you're not certain, even, I'm saying first you have to be certain he's the guy. And if they reached that point and said, yes, that's the guy, and yes, we are absolutely positive we can get him. And he's certain that he wants but to But if it, you yeah. don't have that, I don't think you can wait. Right. I don't think you can wait if you don't have that level of certainty. And my guess is that A&M would not have that level of certainty because DeBoer will not engage to, to those levels. And I know there's other stuff that can go on with agents and stuff. 
My guess would be I don't think that will end up being a thing, but I would not. You're zonk, not ruling it out. I would not zonk him off the list of candidates. I would not zonk Elko off the list of candidates. There are a lot of people I would zonk off. I would not zonk off. Ryan Day? I, there's Ryan Day smoke, but part I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm very skeptical of the Ryan Day smoke. Okay. I'm, I'm skeptical that. I'm skeptical that that's not uh, agent agent drumming up right. stuff. You, but I do think Ryan Day. I I will continue to include Ryan Day as a as, as a candidate. That's not who I would expect them to land. Although that one, there's enough smoke. Where I'm like, go lose to Michigan and see if that gets interesting at all. Um, I think there's a couple people that are in my mind are way more likely than Ryan Day. One of which I won't say today, but I will mention some. And by the way, it's not Matt Rule. That was one that uh, I mentioned him in that big list, and people kind of zeroed in on him. Uh, these one-year guys, like, see, to me, if this coaching search were a year ago, if I'm a And M, I'm going full tilt at Luke Fickle. Yeah. Just the substance and what he's about. And, and I don't know what's going on. Maybe he just made a really bad hire with uh, Phil Longo from North Carolina. Didn't seem to fit that hit you in the mouth meant mantra that he brought with him from Ohio State to Cincy. They haven't had a great year at Wisconsin. To me, I would have called and kicked the tires and been told no. And I think guys like Rule and Fickle, have, they've been very thorough across the street. Like me to sit here and say it, the, if you, if you want to feel good about something, everything you've probably thought of, I've confirmed and I keep that they've thought of. Like I don't want to feel like a search went by with there was a stone left unturned, and I do not feel that way right now. So like I'm not saying for sure, but like guys like Fickle and Rule, even though they've only been at their schools one year, they probably look at A&M and go, damn, damn. If this was a year earlier, I'm there. Hell, Lanning might have been because he that $20 million buyout went up to like 50 with the Phil Knight stuff and the Nike. Prior to that, you might have been able to get in and have a chance with him. But right now, you're looking at those guys are probably like, they're probably like, damn, I could have been at A&M. Much better chance to win than where I'm at now, Nebraska, yeah. Wisconsin, but the problem with those buyouts is they're so early in the contracts, you would, you would pay an absolute arm and leg just to get them, like way beyond like, uh, I think rules is a little bit lower. But some of these coaches will be like, man, I love this. I love what you guys can do. I love the idea. I signed on for six, seven, eight years with, with this administration with this athletic department, with these people here, with these fans. I signed for seven years. It's hard to just up and leave after one. Yeah. I, I was told Landing's kind of the same way, just with Phil Knight. Like, he's been so good to him and so generous and giving, and all that dude wants to do is win. And there would be, even without the buyout, Landing would have a very hard time being the third straight coach to kind of leave Oregon after yeah. a couple years. And he, he – so – there is some of that element too. Um, Jed Fish is a name that keeps coming up, and you know, and there's a world where Arizona could be playing for the Pac-12 title a year after going one and eleven. Um, there's smoke towards him in Florida if Napier were to be let go after just two years. Um, I don't, I, you know, everybody. I'm, I'm just saying, I don't think it's him. Uh, I think there's way too much smoke. Way more smoke than there should be coming from within our own fan base. It's like the, the crap just takes on a life of its own on Twitter. Yeah. And uh, I feel like then it spreads out into like even conventional media and people don't even know where they hear crap or where it really is sourced from. And then they just start saying it and blabbing it themselves. I've seen that a million times. And I think that's what we're, I think that's what we're seeing here with that one too. Yeah. So. I think you have to be careful too. Like I like what they're doing over there, and I think I've heard a lot of good things about him. And I talked about him. I like, look, that guy's a rising coach. I talked to people around the Pac-12 that said, "Hey, that's the hardest team we had to play against." Um. With that said, I just don't think it'll ultimately be him. And and I do think you have to. 
this job, right? You better hire someone that kind of really understands what they're walking into in this conference, in this, uh, in, in this state, on this stage, where A&M is in this unique place because they haven't won a national title, they haven't competed for one, they haven't been in a playoff, they haven't won an SEC, it's like, haven't won a conference title since I was in college, you and I. And, but yet at the same time, the expectations are here. The commitment level's here. The facilities, the fan support, the, you know, the talent level's here. So there is an expectation that you're coming in to win an SEC title. You're coming in to make the playoffs. You're coming in to compete for championships. There is a certain bigness to this thing that not everyone's cut out for. And that's not arrogant that's not you know hey a and what are, what are you talking about you guys have never won anything get that get that like out of your head of trying to like catch me or anyone else that talks positively about a and m everyone understands the lack of of history and championship success that doesn't the the, the past does not mean it can't happen in the future and and Anyone that's a decision maker here, anyone that walks in as a coach, as a player, I'm glad they don't think the way you losers do. Okay? I'm glad they don't. Because I got news, a news flash for any other fan base. Even the ones that collect championships have gone through 10, 15, 20, 30 years of doing nothing. And so they come out of it. And, and the only reason they come out of it is to, they make the right hire. Nick Saban at Michigan State was a different Nick Saban. He was a riser. He, he, you know, he had come from the NFL. All of a sudden, it's like, damn, he's doing good things there. But no one knew what was to come. LSU hired him. He didn't fit. He was not a Southern guy. He comes in there. Guess what, man? LSU sucked for like 20-plus years prior to Saban's arrival. They've won three titles since under three different coaches. Guess what? Alabama went through like, what is it? Tide fans can tell me, 10, 15 years of ineptitude. Tennessee had this great run under Phil Fulmer and then Manning and then T. Martin and they win it. What have they done since? It, it happens to the best of them. USC's trying to figure it out. Texas wandered in the desert. They think they're out of it. They've had a great year. Jimbo had a great year at a and Very similar to what Sark's doing in year three. But Texas has wandered in the desert since Colt McCoy. It happens to everyone. And you know why it happens? you're hiring the wrong coaches or you hold on to a coach too long or you hire and A&M's just got to get, they got to get the right guy. But I think the right guy still has to be equipped to handle what this job is and how big it is and what the expectations are. And people outside can call it unrealistic or whatnot. That's stupid. That's stupid. It's not unrealistic. It's a fair expectation. And you keep going until you find the coach that can live up to that expectation. And there, there's somebody out there. There's somebody out there. And so you keep chipping away. Sumlin got close early. Jimbo got close, you know, years three and four. Somebody can flip that. Um, you don't think if they had a high, I don't, Urban Meyer, I don't believe is, is the guy. You don't think they could hire, who could have hired Urban Meyer out of Bowling Green and he come to A&M, uh, not from Bowling Green, but from Utah. Had he come to A&M from Utah, do you not think he could have won massively at Texas A&M? Of course he could have. Do you think if you'd have hired Nick Saban from Michigan State, would he have failed at Texas A&M? No. I mean, it, it, so you just have to find the right, the right coach. And, and to me, the other thing they have to be is you look every team that's won. And I say this all the time. You can't win in this league without elite, great players. And a has got elite players. There's some positions where they de- we clearly see that they need to upgrade, mm-hmm. but their roster is equipped to win an SEC title. They were this year. They were last year. Uh, depending on how you portal in and out, they should be next year. They've got the talent, and that you can't win this conference without that. No one ever has. Who, who has? Bam. Georgia lately, Bam before that. LSU in the LSU in 2019, the other LSU teams. Auburn. Auburn with Cam Newton and Nick Fairley. And then the, the one team that did 
it was that 2013 Auburn, but still they had NFL guys all over that roster. you got to have that. And my point in saying that is you better have a guy that can recruit that. And Jimbo could. That's the one, not the one, but it's one of the things that he really did bigger and better than anyone that's been through here. He, he, he had that level of talent. Uh, I say ever, you know, Jackie and early RC yeah. did that. But since they've been in the Big 12 SEC, like Jimbo's done that better than anyone has. You, that is, so you have to have a coach that can do that. So you go pull some guy from, you know, wherever that's not ready to come into Texas and recruit Texas and, and, and throughout the Southeast at, at a high clip and go beat Nick Saban and Kirby and Dabo and, and uh, Norvell now with what he's got going at Florida State and Sark and Venables and Kelly. If you can't consistently win battles like that, which that's what Jimbo did, uh, that is the new bare minimum if you really want to compete. Thank you, Billy.